Hello again. Today I have decided to experiment with another um, <clears throat> mini type colander pour. In this case it's a lemon squeezer. It's part of a larger lemon squeezer package but I got just this piece at a charity shop for virtually nothing at all. I like the fact it's got just this little piece coming out here. No legs on it as such and so the paint should run through these and down here. So I've got my canvas on a little cup so it's slightly angled and that means that um, the paint will run down a little until I take that little cup away. <clears throat> so I'm going to just rest my little lemon squeezery contraption thingy here and uh, show you my, my colours which I have got the uh, rainbow colours barring indigo red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet and I'm going to put them in that order because this again is just an experiment but as I do um, the colours should run down anyway so hopefully they won't merge into each other too much I'm going to start with the red and I'm going to pour from the centre of the lemon squeezer down uh, onto the canvas. And the orange. I added some gold metallic to the oranges. I rather like the metallic colour in, in it. it. The shade is actually called Vermilion and with the gold added it, it really does come up with a partial coppery look which I rather like. Now I'll add the lemon which is actually yellow, mid-yellow but it's more it's not the deep yellow rainbow colour that I know the yellow to be, so. And the green. Cyan blue. And violet. The colours coming out are already muddying up. I had a feeling they would do that because of the small outlet that they have to come through but I wanted to try this so I'm finding out what it does. I haven't got a great deal of the violet I'm not too worried as uh, it's a very strong colour. Right, so I'll start again with the red, just a little. Vermilion. Yellow. green blue and violet now I'm going to leave that for a little while because I know that the paint is building up a great deal underneath I want to see how that goes as it forces its way down the canvas. I've only got it on a slight lean so uh, yes it'll be interesting to see what happens here. So I'm just going to step back for a couple of minutes and I will speed up the camera to um, when I edit it to bring the paint down the canvas.
UK, I'm back. Um, I'm just going to lift this gently now off the board. That will allow for the rest of that paint to run down. And I'm just going to pop that over to one corner. Right. Wow. Okay. I had some dimethicone in uh, one or two of those colours. So just a small amount. I can't remember which colours it was in. Uh, plus I have mixed the um, red and the yellow with uh, Flow Troll instead of my usual pouring medium of glue and water. So I'm going to now put my gloves on and I'm going to put the painting back down flat again. I'll take the little cup out. And then I will uh, torch it to get rid of some of those bubbles. I've got some quite large bubbles there where the lemon squeezer was sitting. So I will take my little cup out from underneath and give it a torch. Okay, right, I think before I start I will bring it down to one or the other of these two corners, so I'll turn it around and I'm going to just take it down gently. Actually I like that pattern so much. I'm thinking I might just put some paint around the edge, some white paint to help it to go through. So I'll just get my white titanium white paint out and run it around the edges because I really don't want to lose too much of that colour that's showing there. That pattern, sorry, that's showing there, which again has got more bubbles coming up, some large bubbles. Okay. some white right around the edges. To help it run down. I shouldn't need too much. I'll go right round with just about a centimetre right round the edges because um, there's quite a lot of paint on the canvas now and um, just a small amount should help to ease it over. If I lose some of the colours from this, then uh, it's going to be the price I pay. Okay, I'll try that. And as I intended, we'll start with this corner. Run it down. And these opposite two corners. Take this one right over the edge now. There we are. Give it a bit of a helping hand with my finger. There's still a lot of bubbles in there. I'm not sure what, exactly why that's happening. But all I can think of 
is that they have formed as they're going through the lemon squeezer because these paints have been made up for a while so if they'd just been made up I would uh, suspect that it was from all the stirring. turn it around and finish off the other two corners. At the moment it very much reminds me of an opal or possibly even an opal mine with a lot of opals in it but I think it's got definitely got the opal colours so that's um I love opals I think they're a very attractive stone and it's very pretty. So I'm going to do both these top corners now. A little helping hand. this last corner here I might actually use a corner catcher on this one because it's really the only part that's still got the yellow and red on it which are so pretty so if I use a piece of card as a corner catcher I will uh, might be able to save some of those colors Could take a little while to get down here of course mm. so if I take it back down towards the middle I will bring the paint back down from that other corner there that I've just painted off from I'm sorry if you can't see this in the light but I don't want to change hands because I've got my corner catcher in place now so I'll just bring those down now I can start tipping in this direction bringing the paint down that's better it's moving better now. Good. Just put some paint along the edges here just to help where the corner catcher stopped it. Check over this side here. Yes, I need some on there too, so I will just pick it up on my fingers. I'm not too worried if the colours don't match because it's a very bright and mixed colour painting anyway, so Rightio. Now, I will bring the paint from that corner that's got the bit of red in it down towards the centre. I'll just turn it round. I can watch this corner better from up at this angle. I actually thought I'd used a large amount of the paint on this painting, but... Um, no, it's still moving quite well. I've found from ex previous experience that if I take too much paint off, I end up with some slight cracking. So I'll just take that back down a little again and I'm going to leave it just like that and I want I'm interested to see how that dries because uh, as usual I find the violet tends to take over 
and I'll be interested to see how much violet actually comes out from underneath. Just run my fingers around the bottom here, get some of the drips off. Wipe my hands and I'm going to torch it. So I can see quite a few bubbles in there. There we are, I have finished my painting for today. Uh, one thing I think I will do if I try this again, which I probably will try it again next time, um, I will uh, do a larger amount of each amount of paint and allow that to go through before I put the next layer. So although it'll take longer, I probably won't get such a mixing up of the paints. Although I do have to say, I like the way it's patterned itself. I still think that it reminds me a lot of the sort of mixes you get in opals. Uh, of course, the, my favourite opal, the fire opal, has a lot more red in it. But um, no, overall, I'm very pleased with that. My first experiment with the small lemon squeezer part. So. I will bring the camera down to get some close-ups and once again thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time.